Picture this, it's a lazy Sunday afternoon, and you find yourself flipping through the channels on your vintage, boxy television set. The year is 1985, and there's a certain charm to the static-laden screen. Suddenly, the screen comes to life, and there he is, Mr. Belvedere, impeccably dressed and carrying an air of sophistication that seemed out of place in your cozy living room. Your first encounter with the 1985 TV series, Mr. Belvedere, was like stepping into a world where refined British sensibilities collided with the quintessential American family sitcom. George Owens, his wife Marcia, and their three rambunctious kids navigated life's trials and tribulations under the watchful eye of their unexpected but oh-so-lovable housekeeper, Mr. Belvedere. As the episodes unfolded, you couldn't help but be drawn into their everyday antics, laughter, and heartwarming moments. Do you recall the unforgettable moments, the laughter that echoed in your living room as Mr. Belvedere taught Wesley to waltz, or the time he brewed his special tea? These cherished memories make this show a timeless classic, leaving a mark on your heart. Now, let's dive deeper into the world of Mr. Belvedere with some random, intriguing facts that will rekindle your fondness for this beloved sitcom. Let's unveil the curtain on the backstage secrets and amusing anecdotes that made this show a part of TV history. 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 Mr. Belvedere, a beloved 1985 TV series, emerged as a unique blend of comedy and family dynamics. The show was inspired by the 1947 novel Belvedere by Gwen Davenport, which also spawned a successful film adaptation in 1948. Set in suburban Pittsburgh, it revolved around the Owens family, who hired the refined and British butler, Mr. Belvedere, played by Christopher Hewitt. What set the series apart was its witty humor and Mr. Belvedere's unconventional approach to serving his American employers, often teaching them valuable life lessons. The show's iconic characters included the Owens family members, George, the sports writer father, Marcia, the homemaker mother, and their three children, Kevin, Heather, and Wesley. Each episode navigated the ups and downs of family life while incorporating Mr. Belvedere's sophisticated charm. Mr. Belvedere's unique style lay in its ability to tackle real-life issues with humor and heart, from teenage dating dilemmas to workplace challenges, all under the watchful eye of the enigmatic butler. The show struck a chord with audiences for its relatability, as it depicted the ordinary struggles of an American family, juxtaposed with the extraordinary presence of Mr. Belvedere. It ran for six seasons, leaving an indelible mark on popular culture with its memorable characters and timeless life lessons, cementing its place as a cherished classic in the world of television. In conclusion, Mr. Belvedere was a quintessential 80-second sitcom that found its roots in literature and cinema, offering a delightful blend of comedy and poignant family moments through its iconic characters and the unique presence of Mr. Belvedere himself, making it a lasting and endearing part of television history. In the 1985 TV series Mr. Belvedere, several interesting facts stand out. One notable fact is that 10 previously unaired episodes were added during its syndicated run. Two of these episodes are from season five, titled Mr. Belvedere, The Dinner in Mr. Belvedere, The Attic. The remaining eight unaired episodes are from season six, and they are Mr. Belvedere, Love Fest, Mr. Belvedere, Donuts, Mr. Belvedere, Runaways, Mr. Belvedere, The Pageant, Mr. Belvedere, The Baby, Mr. Belvedere, Bad Marcia, Mr. Belvedere, Home, and Mr. Belvedere, Mumsy. Another intriguing fact is that the 1985 series was the fourth attempt to adapt the 1947 novel Belvedere by Gwen Davenport and the subsequent film series starring Clifton Webb for television. Prior attempts in 1956, 1959, and 1965, with different actors in the lead role, had all been rejected by the networks. Lastly, the series' theme song, according to our new arrival, written by Judy Hart and Gillo and Gary Portnoy, was originally intended for a different series titled Help, which was later scrapped by ABC. Initially performed by an unnamed studio singer for the pilot episode of Mr. Belvedere, a re-recorded version sung by blues singer Leon Redbone was used as the theme when the series was picked up by ABC. Interestingly, in 2007, Gary Portnoy released a previously unheard version of According to Our New Arrival on his album, Destiny. These facts shed light on some unique aspects of the 1985 TV series Mr. Belvedere and its history, from unaired episodes to its theme song's origin. 
This show's journey to the small screen was a long and eventful one, with multiple attempts before it finally found success. Found in the 1985 TV series Mr. Belvedere, one notable debate among the producers revolved around how Mr. Belvedere, the British butler, should narrate his diary entries. They pondered whether he should write his diary during his voiceover or simply discuss what he had already written. This decision played a role in shaping the character's storytelling style throughout the show. Another recurring gag in the series involved Angela Shostakovich, Heather Owen's dim-witted best friend, constantly getting Mr. Belvedere's name wrong. Some of the amusing names she mistakenly used included Mr. Bombardier, Mr. Bellbottom, Mr. Butterfinger, Mr. Volvetta, Mr. Baby Boomer, Mr. Bell Pepper, Mr. Bumper Car, Mr. Belafont, and Mr. Bunny Hopper, adding a touch of humor to the show. Notably, Mr. Belvedere made television history by becoming the first primetime sitcom to feature a character with AIDS. In the season 2 episode titled Wesley's Friend, which aired on January 31, 1986, a classmate of Wesley's was removed from school after contracting AIDS from a blood transfusion. This plot mirrored the real-life story of Ryan White, an Indiana teenager who successfully sued his school after being expelled due to contracting AIDS from a blood transfusion. Despite initial reluctance from ABC, Christopher Hewitt, who played Mr. Belvedere, insisted on airing the episode, highlighting the show's willingness to address important and sensitive issues. These behind-the-scenes details and unique aspects of Mr. Belvedere contribute to its place in television history, making it more than just a typical 1980s sitcom. 80s sitcom. 80s sitcom. The 1985 TV series Mr. Belvedere had its beginnings in the pilot episode titled Mr. Belvedere, Stranger in the Night, which first aired on March 15, 1985. This episode earned cinematographer George Spiro Dibby a primetime Emmy for outstanding lighting direction for a series. His work on this episode was recognized for its exceptional lighting direction. The series itself is based on Gwen Davenport's 1947 novel Belvedere. The story revolves around an arrogant genius who becomes a butler for a family with three bratty children. He uses this position as a disguise to write a novel about a community filled with gossips and busybodies. The novel was earlier adapted into the comedy film Sitting Pretty, featuring Clifton Webb as Mr. Belvedere. Webb reprised this role in two more feature films, Mr. Belvedere Goes to College and Mr. Belvedere Rings the Bell. A notable fact about the cast is that actor Rob Stone was only 23 years old when he was cast as the teenaged Kevin Owens in the series. Mr. Belvedere remains an interesting part of television history, with its origins in a novel and a successful pilot episode that earned critical acclaim. Critical acclaim. In the 1985 TV series Mr. Belvedere, there are some intriguing facts worth noting. One standout detail is the scene where Mr. Belvedere turns off the television with a remote control at the end of the opening credits. This moment is taken from the second season episode titled Mr. Belvedere, The Teacher. Another interesting tidbit involves Rob Stone, the actor who portrayed the eldest Owen's child, Kevin. He took on a new role behind the scenes by directing part one of the series finale, titled Mr. Belvedere, Mr. Belvedere's Wedding, Part One. After his stint on the show, Rob Stone expanded his career into directing, producing, and writing for other television series and films. Lastly, George, one of the characters in the series, always affectionately referred to Mr. Belvedere as Big Guy. These facts shed light on some lesser-known aspects of the beloved 1985 TV series Mr. Belvedere, offering a glimpse into the show's production and character dynamics. And that's the scoop on some intriguing facts about Mr. Belvedere from 1985. Straight from IMDb, DB, DB, DB. The pressure to perform, how high expectations and fame led to depression in Mr. Belvedere's cast member in 1985. The TV series Mr. Belvedere entered our living rooms, bringing humor and warmth to viewers across the nation. However, behind the scenes, one cast member faced a different reality. Amid the show's success, a tale of high expectations, fame, and personal struggles unfolded. Christopher Hewitt, who played the titular character Mr. Belvedere, found himself in the unforgiving spotlight of fame. While the show garnered popularity, Hewitt grappled with the pressure to perform consistently. Critics and fans alike held him to high standards, expecting the same level of wit and charm episode after episode. The burden of constant public scrutiny and the weight of meeting these expectations took a toll on Hewitt's mental health. 
depression began to creep into his life, silently eroding his well-being. The jovial butler portrayed on screen contrasted with the personal battles he fought behind closed doors. In an industry where mental health discussions were often shrouded in stigma, Hewitt's struggles remained largely hidden. The entertainment world of the 1980s was far from the open and empathetic space it is today. Seeking help for mental health issues was seldom encouraged, let alone publicly discussed. Christopher Hewitt's journey serves as a poignant reminder of the pressures actors face, especially when thrust into the limelight. It underscores the importance of recognizing the toll that fame and high expectations can take on an individual's mental well-being. The story also sheds light on the mental health taboos prevalent in the entertainment industry during that era, hindering those in need from seeking the support they required. As we reflect on the legacy of Mr. Belvedere, it's vital to remember that the glittering world of Hollywood often conceals the personal battles that actors wage. Christopher Hewitt's experience reminds us of the importance of breaking down these barriers and providing the necessary support for those who face the burdens of fame. In the end, Christopher Hewitt's journey serves as a sobering reminder that behind the laughter and applause lies the very real struggle of those who entertain us. His story underscores the need to be mindful of the mental health of those in the public eye and the responsibility we all share in dismantling the taboos surrounding it. Surrounding it. Surrounding it. As we bid adieu to our journey through the charming world of the 1985 TV series, Mr. Belvedere, I invite you to take a moment to reflect on the personal connection you've forged with this timeless classic. This show, which has woven its delightful stories into the fabric of our lives, has a unique way of etching itself into our hearts. Think back to those evenings when you sat in front of the television, perhaps with your family or friends, and shared hearty laughs as Mr. Belvedere's witty remarks filled the room. Recall the moments of warmth and humor that this show brought into your life, leaving you with a sense of nostalgia that still lingers today. Whether it was the ever so graceful Mr. Belvedere himself, the spirited Owens family, or the quirky characters that graced the screen, there's a memory, a scene, or a line that stands out for you. Maybe it's Wesley's misadventures, George's hilarious mishaps, or Mr. Belvedere's sage advice that resonates with you most. These moments, no matter how small or grand, are the threads that weave the tapestry of our connection to this show. Now, I encourage you to share your treasured memories and thoughts about Mr. Belvedere with fellow enthusiasts and fans. Let your experiences be part of the collective celebration of a show that has left an indelible mark on our hearts. Thank you for taking this nostalgic journey with me and for sharing in the love for Mr. Belvedere. Your time and interest are greatly appreciated. Until we meet again in the world of entertainment and nostalgia, remember that the memories we create together make these moments truly special.